But let me just, maybe this, for me, this is a place of hope. And we don't have anybody from an African-American church, I don't think, here. But, you know, the, the place of privilege thing is real. And the innovation conversation generally comes from a place of privilege, which we have to figure out how to, how to repent of. However, that's because the people in the places of privilege have been the least innovative. For decades, the, the um, community development movement is largely centered in African American or, or in um, economically marginalized communities because they don't have churches that can support this, right? So they've become experts at how to leverage public funds for community redevelopment, which is absolutely on mission with their presence in those communities. Now, they're so busy, a lot of these, because pastors in those communities, they don't have staffs a lot of the time. They don't have you know, foundations that are giving them grants. What they have are a bunch of people who need them desperately right now so they don't have time to write their books. They don't have time to be the teachers of all of the rest of us which means we have to figure out how to go to them. So CCDA, which is the Christian Community Development Association, is one place that will help us learn to do that. And it's just made up of people who are doing this kind of thing. I was, it's the CCDA. CCDA it's, yeah. if you, John Perkins founded it. And it's a, it's a very well-known, it, it started out being more well-known in evangelical circles, now it's a lot more broad because look mainline people we have data on this mainline people talk a good game in terms of social justice yeah. evangelicals are doing more of it yeah. so on the ground in, in local places right so this is the blind men and the elephant thing right mm -hmm. we need all of us to tell this whole story um, but um, we do I, I feel this really deeply when you say this because the I feel in my bones that we have teachers in front of our eyes that we have not seen because they're not like us or their church is not like our church and privileged churches have had the luxury of being able to self-fund until very recently which sounds lovely except it makes you super isolated if you don't need to go beyond your church to get resources or to find other humans to help you you don't so it also results in the fact that you, I think in some of our churches, you, if, if the interest is uh, handing in or blessing us with some of the privilege that we've accumulated, you don't have the networks of access because you've been so isolated. So it becomes this thing of like, well, I'd like to do this, but I've, I'm not in contact with anyone that, that I know how to do it with. And I think that's part of what this dynamic of the innovation can change if it's done in the right places and the right ways is give opportunities to actually say, oh, we do have things that we can leverage, in fact, for the benefit of others that we've not been in contact with before. But I don't think those networks exist yet. And the CCDA is the best example I know because they're everywhere. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know about them. Right. I never heard about them in seminary. Mm -hmm. Not until I started doing this and Rudy Carrasco, who was part of it, called me because he read a stupid article I wrote. He'd been doing this for 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. 